Although at times I think of my ADHD as sort of a superpower, there are definitely a lot of things that certainly feel like kryptonite because of it. I hope that metaphor makes sense. What I'm trying to say is that I'm Superman and that simple little tasks that you would do on a normal day might kill me. In this video, I'm going to try to focus on five of those things and then some of the things that I do to make them less deadly, or I guess just more manageable. I've been wanting to make a video about my experience with ADHD as a professional illustrator for a long time now, and I just keep putting it off because it feels like too big of a topic and just something that I, I can't fully organize my thoughts around. But recently it occurred to me that I'm never going to be able to do that because it's something that I'm continuously working on and sometimes I'm better at dealing with it and sometimes I'm worse. But over the past few months, I've really been trying to work on it myself and try to figure out some different things that I can do to make myself more productive and be a little less controlled by my ADHD tendencies when I don't want to be. For most of the past 12 years of being a full-time freelance illustrator, I've been able to make it work simply because I had a lot of flexibility within my schedule, which I guess could also be thought of as zero work-life separation. There was no, no balance. It was just work is my life, and that's what I do. It just all was one thing. And I'm sort of okay with that. You know, I love being an illustrator. I love drawing. Even when I'm not technically working on like a client project, I'm usually drawing. And I still sort of think of it the same way because even if it's not for a client work, it's my own work. And that own work is helping push what I'm doing, helping me grow, expand. So I see it more of like a lifestyle instead of a, a career. I didn't really realize any of this was an issue until almost two years ago when my son was born. Once that happened, the amount of free available time to work was significantly cut down. And when I lost all that extra time, I started to realize that it was very difficult for me to get things done. I was feeling panicked, feeling like there was no time for anything. And when I say I was feeling, I should say, I am feeling like <laughs> there's no time. So this is, this is something that I'm currently in the midst of, something that I'm, I'm dealing with and trying to sort of work out. So this is by no means one of those videos where it's like six ADD hacks to make your career through the roof. Do it. You can feel the burn. CrossFit. YouTube. CrossFit. I don't know. I'm talking about CrossFit. It just feels like that sort of vibe of like five unbelievable mind hacks to take your ADHD to the next level. Remember I said I was going to try to focus? I'm going to try. Anyway, after my son was born, it became very clear that my willy-nilly structure or lack of structure just wasn't going to cut it. And I needed to do something to sort of make my work time a little bit more efficient. So as I mentioned, it's been almost two years now, and I'm only now really beginning to try to figure this out. One of my reoccurring ADHD things is a crazy hyper focus on a very specific thing, usually for an unknown amount of time. You never know when it's going to happen and when it's going to leave. But right now it's targeted on ADHD like systems and processes and things you can do to sort of help guide your productivity. I've been reading a whole bunch of books about adult ADHD and how to get things done and how to organize yourself and things and tasks and all these different things. And I've learned a lot of things. And also when I say I read these books, I didn't, I didn't read these books. I can't get myself to sit down and just read. I listen to audiobooks. Sort of the same thing, but I just feel like I should say that because for me, just sitting down with a book and I'm just going to read that book is nearly impossible. Impossible. But an audiobook got that two birds thing. I don't want to kill the birds, but like I can have two birds hang out with one, one tree branch. If you catch my drift. Anyway, if you're interested in some of the books that I've read and enjoyed, I will put them in the description below. You can check them out. All right, let's get onto this list. It's in no particular order because any one of these things can completely shut me down and ruin my day. Also, what things do you struggle with? 
do you also have ADHD and are an illustrator? Even if you don't, I know a lot of these tasks are tedious and annoying. So even if you don't have ADHD, they're still difficult. So some of these tips, I don't even want to call them tips because I'm not an expert in this regard, but some of the things that I do may help you out as well. So if you hear anything in here that helps you out, uh, you know, give me that, uh, smash my thumbs, take my thumb and just hit it with a hammer. All right. Onto the list. Number one, responding to emails. Dun, dun, dun. Boy, howdy. Emails are the worst. Doesn't mean I don't like getting emails. It's just that sometimes it stresses me out. So one of the issues I have with emails is that if there's like a whole bunch of things discussed in an email, or there's like feedback from a client and they're talking about different things, I read the first part and then I start thinking about the first part while I'm reading the rest of it. And then I have no idea what I just read. And then I do it again. I start over and then maybe I get to the second one, but then I'm starting to think about the second one and it's all just this death spiral of never being able to do anything. One thing I've started doing, I actually I've been doing this for a really long time. I, I don't remember when I first started doing it, but I literally just copy and paste the email into the notes app I use, which is Evernote. I'll just like go in and cut out all the superfluous words, like anything that's not necessary. And then once I get it all streamlined, <laughs> I will just like put line breaks between all of the different points. And then in the end, I've got this neat little short almost to-do list. And then I just start at the top and then I respond to that. And then I feel like I just crossed something off my list. I get a little dopamine hit from that feeling of accomplishment. And that gives me the fuel to move on to the next one. And then I do that. And then the next one. And then usually... There's not more than three things in an email. And then I copy and paste what I did, put it together in a paragraph so it looks like a normal little thing. And then I send it off and I'm feeling pretty good about myself because I just responded to an email that I've been stressed about for, I don't know, however long. Another thing I have a problem with with emails is I will like read them maybe in bed or if I'm just like, I don't know, out and I see it on my phone and I read it. And then because it shows up as read, I may have thought about the email a whole bunch and then my brain thinks that I sort of responded, but I didn't respond. I just sort of responded in my head and I didn't do it. So what I do is make sure that if I read an email on my phone, I will just put it back to mark as unread so that when I go to my computer, it shows up as a new email. All right, number two is sending invoices. Now you would think the reward of getting paid for your hard work would be enough motivation to get me to send out an invoice. The problem is, usually I don't get paid for a project for like 30 days or something like that. And when you have ADHD, that can feel like another time, another world. It's very hard for me to do things that are like thinking about the future. I just, it just seems like it's so far away and I can't even imagine what it would feel like to get paid in a month. Like, I want the money now, but, you know, it's not going to happen now. So I'm like, well, why am I going to do this now? Because it's not going to make much of a difference. If I do it tomorrow, it's, uh, you know, a month and a day. The problem is this keeps going and going, and then, you know, maybe I forget. So the first thing that I do is try to do them first thing in the day. And this is also the same for emails. I went through that little routine that I go through with emails to just sort of, like, break it up, answer the questions. But... I also really need to do them first thing in the morning too, or my brain is just not interested in working through it. Even, even when I do the simplest thing where I break it down, sometimes that's even hard. So these sort of tasks that I hate doing, I got to do them right away. The longer I wait into the day, the harder it gets. Another thing that I found really useful with invoices is using something like QuickBooks, Self-Employed, or FreshBooks, because it makes the invoicing process a lot easier. I'm a recovering graphic designer who felt the need to design his invoices from the ground up so that every time that I was going to send out an invoice, I'd have to load up InDesign, plug in all the information, make sure it was all neat and ready to go, then export a PDF and then email a PDF. But now that I've let that go and I use QuickBooks Self-Employed, 
I can upload my logo in there and then I just type in the project info and then it automatically sends from there and it also keeps track of it, which is also a huge thing for me. Early on in my career and not so early, it went on for a while. I'd have these situations where an awkward amount of time had gone by since I sent that invoice and I honestly wouldn't know if I had been paid or not. And I know this sounds a little bit crazy, especially if you're watching this and you don't have ADHD, but I I wouldn't know. So so let me explain how this this could occur. When a payment comes in, you get the check in the mail or if it's not a wire transfer, and then, you know, you can we've got the future now so I can do like a mobile deposit on my phone. The problem is I'd usually do like two or three at a time because I'd be sort of lazy and some would just sit on my desk. When you go to look up your bank records, it would just show you that mobile deposit and like the total amount of that deposit. So if I was going to try to figure out if I had been paid for an invoice and I'm looking for that amount, I can't really find it. This sounds confusing, but basically I didn't have a system in place to let myself know if I had been paid for a project. And because I didn't have that system in place, if I was trying to remember if I actually got paid for a project and I couldn't figure it out myself, I couldn't really send like an awkward email saying, hey, I don't know if you paid me, but maybe you paid me. Can you just tell me if you paid me? That's a weird email to send. So there's probably been times where I didn't get paid for projects because I'm an idiot. One thing that I started doing that helped a little bit, I would export a PDF of the invoice and save it into an outstanding invoices folder, which is a folder that was titled outstanding invoices. And then when they paid me, I would just delete that file from the folder. And this worked some of the time. I still had to remember to go in and delete that invoice, but you know. But again, if you use something like QuickBooks or FreshBooks, all of this is taken away. You don't have to think about any of it. It automatically sends the invoice. And then it can also check in if you haven't received payment after the, the due date, which is usually like you know 30 days out or whatever. So if they haven't paid you, it'll automatically send a reminder and you don't even have to think about that. Hey, so this is some uh, pretty niche content. If you relate to this, uh, maybe you should subscribe. Do you already subscribe to this channel? Maybe you should do it. Oh, I just thought of two more things. So stick around after number five for two more bonus deadly kryptonite pieces. I don't know why I'm still holding on to this metaphor. Okay, so another issue I have is hyper-focusing on one project when I have multiples on my plate which is almost always the case. It's very rare that it's just one project that I have to think about. It's very hard for me to not want to just finish something to completion in like one sitting. I just want to focus on that and just spend all my time on that. And this is not ideal when you have a lot of different projects and you need to sort of make progress on all of them. Now, this is definitely one that I'm still working on and still struggling with on a regular basis, but I have found that Using timers does work. This is a sort of a very common ADHD tip that I've discovered through reading about different techniques that people use. Uh, a lot of people use like little egg timers or kitchen timers or whatever. When I first started doing this, I would just like set an alarm on my phone and give myself like an hour to work on a project on my list. And then after that, I would give myself an hour to work on something else. Every time I've done this, I felt like, wow, I got a lot more accomplished than I thought I would. But it's still something that's hard for me to do because I still get into this habit where I'll get my list out to, st to look at the projects that I have to do and then I'll be like, all right, I'm going to start working on this and I start working on it and then I just lose a whole bunch of time. You ever have a acoustic panel fall on your head while you're recording a video? I don't know what I was talking about. All right. How do I recover from this? Anyway, I have a hard time not focusing on the project that I choose to start working on. It's not like it's I'm focusing on that project because it's like the one that I like the best. It's just whatever one I start with, it's just like hard for me to stop. 
I just want to keep going through it. So using timers definitely helps me. I've started using this app called Timo or Timo. It's T-I-I-M-O. It's really good. You can plug in like different activities or items on your list and then schedule how long you think it'll take, which also, as I mentioned, is very hard for me. But you can just sort of give yourself an allotted amount of time and then you can like see them in your day. I've also noticed that this is really good for me in terms of if like I schedule a call and like sort of forget about it, I can just plug it in here right away. And then I can look through the days to see what's going on that day. So I like this app. I just started using it, but I feel like it's going to be really helpful for me. There's also one called Llama Life, which seemed like it was going to be pretty good too, but I think I like Timo better so far. But again, this is all still new for me. Do any of you have any tips on not focusing on just one project or balancing many different projects? I've been doing it for 12 years now. And even before that, when I worked as a graphic designer, I was managing multiple projects and it's still, still a struggle. So number four, number four, number four, out of sight, out of mind. It's very easy for me to just forget about things that are on my list if I don't have an actual list. And that is my solution is to have actual lists of all the different things that I'm doing. I usually have lists that are like client projects, but also like personal things. And just, I, I have lists, lots of lists. I used to just do this in Evernote, but I've discovered more recently that having a physical piece of paper list that I can see at all times while I'm working is really important to me. And really not so much important, it's, it's just more helpful. When it's in Evernote, it can get lost in other stuff because I just throw shit in Evernote constantly. I'm just always like putting things in there, ideas, and it can get a little chaotic. So having just a physical piece of paper that just has my stuff on it is really helpful. Currently, what's been working well is I've been making one like this that has like the days of the week and some spots below it. That way, you know, the next day I can move stuff over if I didn't get them done. But I like to have this available so I can see it at all times, in addition to Evernote. I also sometimes, well, I've been experimenting with writing stuff in like a little pocket-sized notebook. Um, I can't decide if I'm gonna keep doing this. I might, it might be helpful. Also kind of want like a, an iPad mini. I don't need an iPad mini. That's a, that leads me to Number five, super impulsive. I have these ideas in my head and I just want to jump on them. Like I saw a video about an iPad mini and now I'm like, I need an iPad mini to go with my iPad Pro because the iPad mini I could take with me everywhere I go and be so easy. And then I'm like, and then I want to get rid of my stupid Pro Max phone because it's so big and annoying and get a regular size one, but I don't think I can do that. But anyway, this is that's another thing. Let me give you another example of how I'm super impulsive. Recently, I decided I wanted to move my office down to my unfinished basement. I thought it was going to be a great idea. I was like, oh, it'll be sort of like rugged and like a that sort of bare bones like workspace. It'll have cool concrete vibes. So I like went down there, I cleaned the floor, cleaned the walls. I painted a mural for this office, moved all my stuff down there, started doing the thing where you got to get everything super organized, super neat. I started buying new stuff. I need new speakers. I set up like a, a TV, had speakers going through the ceiling. They were like hanging down. Well, it was a shit ton of work. And then I had my office down there for like a week. I'd go down there and I'd be like, it's kind of like a, a basement down here. It's not really ready for this. And then we had a ton of rain, flooded, and then I cleaned everything up. Luckily, nothing was ruined, but it flooded again. And I was like, wow, uh, I didn't really think of this. <laughs> so then I had to move everything back up, and it was stupid. And I probably should have thought this through, but I didn't. I just got, went all in on it. You want another example? How about this YouTube channel right here? When I had the idea for the YouTube channel, I was like all in on it. I was like, I gotta, I gotta do it. I'm still living in the world where I believe it is a good idea. Hopefully that'll pan out and be true. 
I don't know. What do you guys think? Am I living in delusion? Because let me tell you, it is a lot of work to make all these videos. It is fun though. It's more fun than moving into a basement and moving back out. I do enjoy this most of the time. I guess the only time I don't enjoy it is if I'm like rushing because I'm running out of time, stuff like that. But I do really like making these videos and getting feedback from all of you. It seems like a lot of you have been into these and I really, really appreciate that. So I don't know. Uh, it, it seems like I need, I need a thumber right now. I need you to go down there and give me a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe. Did you see that I'm almost at 2000 subscribers? That's pretty cool. All right. So let's talk about two more things. Okay. Projects without real deadlines. When a client is like, yeah, you know, we don't have a real deadline. Just, you know, whenever I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I have so many things that I want to do all the time. And if I have something on my list that does not have a deadline, it's getting pushed. It's getting pushed. I can't. And also if it's like a far off deadline, I can't think about the future. <laughs> it just sounds ridiculous, but it's so hard for me to like think long-term like that, which is, is a very bad thing, but it's, it's true. I can't do it. So one thing that I do, sometimes I literally just try to sneak one by myself. Like I'll be writing down on my to-do list. I'll just sneak in a quick little due date there and hope that I forget that I made up that date. And I'm going to be honest, half the time it works. So even if you don't have a real date, you need to sort of give yourself a fake deadline or you're never going to get it done. When you have ADHD, you need those sort of motivators to get things done. And due dates are the best kind of motivator because you got to hit that deadline. Bonus number two, estimating how long things will take. This is impossible for me. I never have any idea. I always underestimate how long something is going to take because in the past I've been able to do things pretty quickly, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it takes way longer than I think. I also can't estimate time. Oftentimes when I'm thinking back on something, I don't know if it was an hour or three hours. And this could be like right after I finished it. I could be like, I don't know if I just worked on that for an hour or three hours. Let me see what time it is. This one I'm still sort of working on. What I really need to do is to just like record a process from start to finish. I need to do it with several of them so I can get some data and actually look at the data and see how long things actually take. But it's crazy that I've been doing this for over a decade and I still don't really know how long things take. I know there's lots of variables, but I should have a rough idea. It's always been the situation where like I can get things done. Like if it's a really tight deadline, I can make it work. But, you know, it's that's not always the case. Hey, YouTube, give me that like and subscribe. Ring my bell. You can ring my bell. Ring my bell. You can ring my bell. Is that how the song goes? Ring my bell? Is that a song? All right. Good talk. I'll see you later.